Welcome to uh, November's edition of Golf Away Tours webinar. This uh, month, we're pleased to have with us uh, the Director of Golf Emeritus and Director of Golf Sales at Casa de Campo Resort, one of my favorite golf resorts in the world, uh, Gilles Gagnon. Gilles, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Glad to see you. Um, so, Gilles, uh, we were just chatting a bit before uh, coming on that, uh, you know, you've got, uh, you're Canadian, obviously, born in Montreal, uh, and uh, ended up down at Casa de Campo, and you've been there for, I believe, over 30 years. So, uh, explain to us a little bit about your history. I know you're a hockey player to start with. How did you end up in the golf industry and eventually at Casa de Campo? Well, uh, I played junior hockey in Montreal and uh, went to the camp for the junior Canadian when I was 19. And uh, I was the fourth center at the time. Uh, but Rajan Roux, Gilbert Perrault, all these guys were there. And I realized that, well, maybe I'm not big enough, I'm not fast enough, and I'm not good enough. And uh, I was recruited by Michigan State to play hockey there and uh, so I got a scholarship, went and played hockey there and, uh, and studied, got my, my degree and then went on to, uh, to uh, play a little bit in the International League and again I was getting beat up pretty bad and uh, I was offered a position at uh, Colgate University as the assistant hockey coach and I went there and the golf professional retired and I just went, oh Jesus, you know I got some time. By then I was like a two or three handicap and uh, you know I was and played for a long time and they they basically didn't have enough time to get somebody or to so I took the job over I was there and I, I through Michigan State contact I brought the NCAA there in 1977 and from there in 1980 I got a call that somebody's looking for a golf director in the Dominican Republic that spoke you know a couple languages obviously English and, and French for me had a college degree, I'd run some, you know, some my major like the NCAA, which is a pretty big, you know, organization. So anyway, so I applied for the job and uh, I ended up getting the job. But, you know, when I came down here 40 years ago, uh, we had two golf courses and uh, no, no, no television. Radio was basically just a little radio from, uh, from La Romana and so all Spanish. Um, you know, we had uh, one event, it was an, uh, uh, an international program we had in January, but, you know, we had about, I don't know, 8,000, 7,000 rounds and, uh, you know, not much to do. So I started to, uh, to, to develop events and stuff like that. And uh, basically that's how I got here. I was here for a two year contract and I've been here 40 years. <laughs> obviously love the place and what a beautiful place to be. And obviously you're there now. I know you spend some time up in Florida as well, but, uh, it must be great uh, living there uh, pretty much full time. And I know that you changed your role a little bit. You were looking after the golf operations uh, when I first met you down there. And uh, a few years ago, you switched and you're doing more golf sales now, which gives you a little bit more time to play golf, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, what happened is we went from, you know, two golf courses to, uh, you know, now we have 90 holes of golf. We, you know, developed a private club. It's got 27 holes, nine fours, got a 27. And we were playing, at, you know, when we were at the peak there, the peak of golf, we were doing over 100,000 rounds and I was, you know, working. And I, so by the time, you know, a lot of all of my buddies were retiring and then, uh, you know, uh, at 60, well, I was 69 and I said, you know what, I, my wife had a little, you know, a little problem, a health problem. And I said, you know, that's enough. I can't do that. And, uh, you know, I'm done. And the owner said, Jill, look, by now, now you have, you know, 25 tournaments that you created and, uh, why don't, what do you want to do? You, you know, you don't want to go. And I said, no, I don't. But, you know, he said, well, do whatever you want. You know, so I said, well, you know, I'm going to continue to bring groups. So if you want, he says, perfect. You should, everything's the same. Continue what you got in terms of, but you don't run the golf. We hired somebody else. And so basically I worked, uh, like I told you, till about two o'clock every day. And then I go play golf. No, oh, what a good life. What a good life. So, uh Things, obviously, you know, part of what we want to get across here and, and information we want to get from you uh, to, to let our clients know sort of how things are down in the Dominican during these crazy times. Obviously, COVID's affected everybody and, uh, you know, not a lot of Canadians are traveling right now, but it's going to be a long winter up here. And so we know people are going to want to get away uh, and they're looking for places that are going to be safe to travel to. So um, what, what's the resort doing? What's the situation at the resort? And what are the protocols that have changed? And what's the resort doing to make people safe when they go to visit from Canada and visit Casa de Campo? Well, first of all, let me say that uh, when pandemic you know, hit and uh, we had, uh, I think it was uh, early March or something, that uh, March 15th that we, uh, we had just come back from the States 
And uh, the, the, you know, I got a call and say, look, there's a couple of flights out, you know, that are leaving out of Putacana and then Santa Domingo. If you guys want to go back to the States, you know, you got to get on because I think they're going to shut the airport. So my wife and I discussed it and we said, no, nah, why are we going to go? You know, we have a, a nice little place in Florida, in, in West Palm, but I said, oh, let's stay. Well, we stayed here the entire time and up to they reopened, I think it was July 1st, they reopened the airport. And I want to tell you, it was fantastic. You know, the weather was great. Uh, yeah, everything was shut down. Our golf course was shut down. Uh, but, you know, we, uh, we walked every day and, you know, open air, I mean, our house is quite open, you know, I mean, it's just the way you live in the Dominican Republic, 85. And then uh, a little golf course not too far from here opened up and uh, Miguel Angel Jimenez, the, uh, the, the most interesting man in the world there, the golfer, bought a house here at Casa de Campo. So about two weeks after the, the pan, you know, pandemic started, we have this golf course that opened. And we went out and played golf there every afternoon, you know, we wore masks and we were cleaning the carts. And so, you know, it was pretty safe. Well, then we opened the resort August 1st, but the amount of work that we've done is amazing. You know, you check in, they have a glass type of thing, they give you a mask, they give you gloves, they take your temperature. Uh, the restaurants, the indoor restaurant right now, like Gazeta is closed because it's indoor. We, all the restaurants are all outside basically, you know, a roof over, but it's all outside. Uh, you know, the, we have space in between the tables. We don't take as many people, but um, in terms of all the staff, I can assure you my golf staff that I worked with, you know, for 38 years, I stay in touch with most of those kids. They were, they're all tested. Nobody added two people at, you know, positive tests, but they were false positive. And, uh, you know, we have a wonderful hospital here that, you know, the few people that I, that I didn't know, maybe from Santa, we came in, they were treated very well, you know, they didn't die or anything. So, you know, I think this is the safest place you can possibly be. I mean, you know, at 72 and my wife has a little health issue, we were in Boston for a checkup and the doctor said, it's the best place you can be, you know, outside. Because if, I have a daughter in New York and she's stuck inside, you know, the whole time in her, you know, and so, you know, to travel here, we do have a few Canadians that have home here and, uh, you know, they're coming back and they, they don't worry about going back. And I mean, obviously now quarantine for 14 days going back is not the easiest thing. But if it wasn't safe, I wouldn't be here. I have other options. Right, and right. I would rather be here. Yeah, no, that's fair. And, and yeah, we mentioned, we talked before about how, you know, obviously the Canadian government still has the 14 day quarantine from when for when we return and, and hopefully that changes uh, sooner than later, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. But um, you know, in the meantime, people can go down, you know, even for long stays, uh, which, which would be worthwhile obviously and, and make it easier to come back. But um, obviously the, the government has, uh, has put a lot into trying to bring uh, tourists back to the Dominican Republic. It's obviously your biggest um, revenue or, uh, for, for the country. Uh, so uh, they've offered free travel insurance to anybody uh, arriving in the Dominican Republic. So uh, given that, which is, which is unprecedented, and obviously uh, I, I don't know any other destination that's doing that currently, uh, they're really trying to drive business. So uh, are you confident that business is going to come back this winter and to what levels? You mean the, uh, the tourism or the virus? <laughs> uh, tourism, tourism will come yeah, back. Yeah, well, yeah, hopefully not the yeah. virus, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess not. But, you know, tourism, I think, well, first of all, let me say this. There's not, you know, we have over 2,000 homes at Casa de Campo. When I got here, we were about 75. There's 2,000 homes at Casa, Casa de Campo. I've had three offers in my house in the last week and a half. Right. People are moving out of Santo Domingo because it's a big city, like they're working out, you know, getting out of New York. We've actually have people from the States that have bought homes here because they can work online, like you and I are talking right now. They don't necessarily have to be at an office, so they come down here. So right now, real estate is amazing. I mean, the price has gone up, and we're actually having a hard time getting villa that we put in our rental pool because people rent long term. Now, again, I think the election in the United States is going to be a big, uh, you know, a big factor to see who wins, who loses, what they do, uh, and then you know, the Dominican Republic has got the worst publicity in the world. You know, I mean. First, we have Zika. Then we have the alcohol, which all, you know, Zika was, I didn't know anybody at Casa de Campo that got it. Then we had the alcohol, which was in a couple of hotels and these people had, you know, didn't take their medication. The FBI checked it and it was, you know, it was another fake story which killed us, you know? I mean, really, not us, 
Casa de Campo, but we did lose some business because, oh God, you go, well, you know, Casa de Campo is a different level. It's not like we put a bottle, you know, against the wall and you can take it like you do a, a, on a cooler, which a lot of the hotel, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, Punta Cana is a nice destination, but, you know, they, it's, the price is different. They put bottle against the wall, so maybe, you know, they could be in fact. But we didn't have any, but it's all, and then nobody came back up and say, oh, by the way, this wasn't true, you know? And now we get hit with this thing, and somebody called me today, actually a little bit of one, they said, oh, in the States now, the United States government says level four. I said, level four, you know, what level are we talking about? You know what I mean? It, it, there's nothing here. You know, there really is a problem that I can tell you. Now, people are worried, airline, like I said, my wife and I have been to Boston and New Jersey and everything. The traveling is fantastic. You know, everybody wear masks and, and they, they came up with a report the other day that says that the, the chance of catching COVID on the plane is almost zero. Uh, so, you know, is it gonna come back? It'll come back, but I think it's gonna be, you know, the corporation, what we're doing is let's say a corporation cancel a program for January, let's say, because they were worried, right? Well. You say, well, come back next year. Well, the way they, the corporation booked their business is two, three years ahead. So for us, you know, that's, it's going to be a little time. But the people that canceled at the last, you know, last March, and they're, they're coming back now in November. Now some people are canceling in November. They want to come back the winter or in April. So they haven't given up on us. But again, it's all going to depend what kind of publicity, you know, we get in the States with, the, with this election. And I think it's going to change a lot after that. But... Yeah. It's going to be a little while, I think, before we come back. You know, it's going to be a year, I think, before we come back where we were in terms of, you know, 45,000 rooms in Punta Cana are 100% sold out. And we were running, you know, 95% occupancy, you know, pretty much. And so, yeah, it'll be a little bit. Yeah. And so in some ways, it'd be better to go back yeah, now when it's quieter because there's less people, less people around the pool, less people at the restaurants. And and uh and so on so maybe a bit safer that way as well but uh so just uh, give for those of us now I've, I've had the privilege of going to the resort i was there um about five years ago for the dominican republic golf exchange that you guys hosted uh and really enjoyed it and got a good taste of the resort but for those who haven't been there explain to us a little bit about the resort and what people can expect when they stay there in terms of just everything that's that's available on the entire property which is huge right well, it's 7,000 acres. Like I said, we have uh, 90 holes of golf. Um, we have, uh, you know, we have pools at the, uh, we have a beach, obviously, a nice private beach. We have two pools there, an adult and, and a kids, you know, where you can take your kids or if you're an adult, you know, you don't want to be around kids screaming and stuff like that. But my grandkids, you know, take them to the other pool. Uh, you know, we have, uh, we have a beach club, which is a wonderful restaurant. We have seven restaurants. You got Piazzetta which is Italian. We have Altos de Chabon, which is an artisan village up there. We have an amphitheater with 7,000 seats, but it's all on, on rocks. You know, it looks like it's been built a zillion years ago. Um, so there's two restaurants up there. We have one, we have two in the marina, beautiful marina with all kinds of boats. And, uh, you know, we have uh, these boats that arrived that are 180 foot long and, and things like that. Uh, there you have uh, two restaurants that you could do. You have a Pub Belly, which is most like a, a kind of a sushi kind of restaurant, and then Casita. We have a, a you know bars at the next to the front desk there, and we also have a, you know a restaurant there, uh, Kanya. And then you have a, the Lago Restaurant, which is overlooking the 18 hole of Tita the Dog, where people have breakfast and lunch. You know we have uh, polo. We have uh, you know you could go on horses. You could go you know we're the number one place for blue marlin fishing. Uh, tennis, a great tennis complex, one of the best shooting, uh, you know, if you're into ski and uh, trap and all that, one of the top one in the world that was built originally by the top English, uh, you know, person that know about shooting. And so, you know, there's all kinds of, we have kids at Casa, you can bring your kids here, you can take your kids to a, to a program where they, you know, they, they give them a little golf thing and tennis and, you know, coloring and uh, instruction stuff. So, you know, and I don't know what else I mean. Like I said, you could go from here. We have an island, the private, you know, an island is called Catalina. You can take a boat ride there. It costs you thirty-five dollars. You get it. They take you there, and you can, you know, the beach is amazing. And so, 
you know, there's tons of activity. The weather is pretty much the same all year round. September sometimes a little shaky because of hurricane, you know, but this year we've been very lucky touch wood so far. Um, but, you know, there's all kinds of, the weather's, you know, everywhere you could go. Like I said, I have a house in Florida. I could go there. It could be cold, could be rainy and stuff. And here, you know, 85 degrees and sunny pretty much all year round. Yeah. Uh, like I said, it gets a little warm in September, but at night the, the temperature drops. It's a little cooler, you know, at night. But, you know, we, I put a sweater on when it's 80 degrees. So, you know, it's a little, <laughs> a little as a Canadian, everybody tells me, I'm going to be a Canadian and be wearing a sweater now. It's 80 degrees. But, um, you, you become weak, Joe. <laughs> yeah. But so, you know, and then you, when you arrive now, you check in, you know, like I told you, you know, they give you a mask if you don't have, but they check your temperature. We have transportation from Punta Cana and Santo Domingo Airport. Also from La Romana, we have our own airport and we have charters out of Canada, you have Toronto and Quebec. I don't think they, I guess now they're not going to start for a little while, but you know, the airport is literally 10 minutes away uh, from the main, from the front desk. So you know, they, they, you, there's not a whole lot that, that we're missing here. You know, if there's something that we're missing, you, you know, uh, I know if we talk about it, we probably, we have a beautiful practice facility now with golf. We have those track men. You can go in there and take lessons, get, you know, figure out that you think you're driving 280 and in reality, you're only driving about 210. <laughs> so, <laughs> I said, I don't want to go there because, you know, I'd rather just hear that, I, oh my, you killed it versus when you measure it, it's only about 235 or 230. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, I've been all over the world. My daughter played in the U.S. Open in 2001. She played in the U.S. Amateur, three U.S. Junior, excuse me, two U.S. Junior. And I've traveled to Manila with her to play in the world. And, you know, she played in the world. And there's never a, a resort that I've been that I, or a place that I've been that I think that beat this place. And again, Dominican Republic's got, you know, great. Punta Cana, you know, they have Corrales there. We have the PGA Tour there. You know, they have a beautiful uh, small hotel with, 20 some rooms that, you know, like it's over the, you know, over the top. They have regular hotel. Bavaro's got all kinds of hotel room. Cap Canas, but for, you know, it's a beautiful destination. You know, I mean, it's, I wouldn't knock anything else about anything in the Dominican Republic, but we are number one. Yeah, and I'd agree with that. And, and you mentioned you're only 10 minutes from La Romana, but even only 45 minutes with the new highway. I say new highway. It's been open a few years now, but from Punta Cana Airport, which is the one that most flights uh, go into from, you know, from a lot of Canadian destinations. But it's so close. And as you said, you know, easy transfer across. And, uh, and we can see the weather behind you there. Again, a perfect day today. So, uh, you know, much rather be That's down there. Probably than, than probably probably with, uh, Sorry about that. Somebody's calling. Here, here we go. Okay. See a little more outside the window. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. Beautiful. So, and then you mentioned, obviously, the 90 holes of golf and, and, uh, Top of that list is uh, is Teeth the Dog, obviously, ranked, which has been ranked top 100 in the world. So uh, definitely some some bucket list golf to go see. So um, so pretty pretty awesome. And I remember when I was there, the thing I loved is that with every room, you get your own golf cart. And for the 7,000 acres, it's a massive property, but I wanted to go up to see the Die 4 course. And, you know, I took my cart all the way there, and it was like a half-hour cart ride, but I got to see the whole property. You know, you, then you cart over to the marina and down to the beach club and everything, and it's just a cool way to get around and, and feels very safe for sure. So, uh, yeah, and you don't have, like, you see what you, I mentioned, you know, you don't have to worry about renting a car. You know, you get a golf cart and it takes you, you know, I mean, take from your room because, you know, our hotel is not like 12 stories. It's basically just first floor and second floor because we don't ever want to build anything that would obstruct the view to the ocean. So your first floor, second floor, and it's spread out. So, you know, you take the cart, let's say you're at the furthest place you could be on, on a roof, it'll take you three minutes on a golf cart to get to the breakfast area, to the teeth of the dog and links. Then you take, a, we have a little shuttle that goes up the dive floor, that takes about 10 minutes to get up there. Um, so, but you can get to the beach in about, you know, maybe 10, 12 minutes to the beach. The marina might take you 15 and then, Dive four, like you said, I can take you around. Would only take you 15 minutes versus 30. But um, <laughs> I had a slow card, obviously. Yeah, yeah, well, I kind of get around a little bit. But yeah, so that's you know that's fantastic. You know, I mean, it's uh, and it, you know, and again, it's safe. You know, our, our entire place is and outside the, the Casa de Campo was not bad either. I mean, my wife was just there this morning for to get her nails done or something. She had a little place she goes to and. Uh, so, you know, the, the people are friendly, uh, you know, they're, they're happy to have you back here or so, like I said, you know, I love it. I could be, I 
could go anywhere. I go to I go to Montreal, visit my brother and, the, and his wife in the summer. I love it up there, you know, and stuff. But you know, where would you want? You want to go to West Palm, you know, where I live on a beautiful golf course there or here. And I always tell my wife, well, there, you know, I have to go, my buddies, I have to drive. Here I just put my golf cart, I give it a push, put it in neutral, and I get to I get to the golf course, you know, or just walk across the fairway here to Ladamana Country Club. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So uh, lastly, before I let you go, I know that uh, obviously being the director of golf there for so many years and being on property for almost 40 years, you've had some cool experiences with some, and I know a lot of celebrities spend time down there and have events down there. Uh, can you share with us a story or two of uh, your favorite encounters with, with some celebrities uh, during your years? Well, uh, you know, I played with uh, Clinton, Bo Bush, uh, played with Carter, I, you know, president, all the presidents and stuff. I played with Sean Connery, Robert Redford, and uh, Prime Minister uh, Jean Chrétien one time. And uh, we played golf, and my wife is American. And uh, so we were playing with him, and she was kind of out driving him a little bit, you know. And he kept saying, you know, uh, if you'd like to come to Canada, you know, maybe you should stop, you know, out driving me. And that night, I, uh, Bill Clinton was here. So uh, Bill Clinton and the two of them got together, and he brought me to play. I was going to be his partner and well, Clinton flew, it was in Punta Cana, flew in and helicopter landing on the golf course. And he said, Oh, he said, you know, how are you? He goes, well, he says, you know, I brought, he said, oh, Jill's going to play with us. He said, well, yeah, but I brought, I was going to play with five or six. He goes, um, he said, uh, President Clinton, I'm still the prime minister. You're no longer the president. So Jill's playing with us. <laughs> so anyway, so, uh, and, uh, I said, no, 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 I'll go around and they play. But that night, um, I said, would you like to come? I said, I know you go to a lot of dinner. Would you like to come, you know, uh, to dinner at our house? And he said, sure, I'd love to. Well, he was only supposed to be there for, you know, whatever the secret service said, you know, he's going to be there for an hour or two. He ended up being there till midnight or something. And we had the best time. So, you know, as a Canadian, maybe you guys can relate to that. But, uh, you know, Sean Connery was amazing. I sat with him for probably an hour and a half talking. And the man is like, you know, you look at him and he's, you know, tall British accent, just a, a legend. And, you know, the women are passing out as he's walking down, you know, down. but uh, yeah, you know, I've had some, some great experience played with, uh, you know, Freddie Couples, play with John Daly, uh, spent a week with Scott for Plank, uh, like one, you know, Miguel Anel Jimenez is here now. I can't tell you how many times we played together. Um, it's been a pretty amazing, uh, amazing career, you know, from the, uh, a little five foot five Canadian coming out of uh, from a single mom and live in a basement in Montreal. And uh, we never, we didn't start, you know, we didn't not eat. We ate every day, but it's not like we had a whole lot of money. And uh, so if I would say that where I am today versus if I would have, you know, at 20 years old, if they would have told me this is where you'd be, you know, for 40 years and what do I, I would have signed up for it right away because. Um, I, I do have, uh, I work hard, but I have an amazing, I have an amazing, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Jill, uh, I really appreciate, uh, you doing this with us and, uh, um, you know, I, I really, I can't wait myself to get down there again. And I know, you know, we've sent a number of people to your, to your resort and they all come back raving about it. Uh, it's just like you said, one of the best places in the world. I, I tend to agree. It's one of the best golf resorts that I've ever seen. And, uh, you know, I can't wait to get back down there again and hopefully see you and maybe play around a round of golf next time I'm there. I'd love to. And, uh, you know, I'm Canadian. People ask me, oh, what passport do you have? I'm a Canadian, you know, for I love Canada. Uh, you know, grateful for the people that come here. It's always nice to see Canadians and uh, sometimes speak a little French with my Quebecois, you know, my. Uh, but, uh, you know, all the best to everybody. Uh, stay safe and healthy. And hopefully this will uh, will go away and uh, we can all have a different normal, but, a, you know, a nice normal life. So all the best. Yeah. Thank you for having me on your, uh, on your show. Yeah, thanks a lot, Gio. Merci beaucoup.